Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Reduce stutters by clearing or deleting your NVIDIA shader cache? Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. I first want to apologize for my voice. I'm still getting over the flu, so I hope you can deal with it for the video. Now, before we get started in today's video, I just have one disclaimer. Keep in mind that all stutters are not created equal, and there are many things that can cause stutters inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So why does the NVIDIA shader cache cause stutters inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator? Similar to the rolling cache, anytime there is an update, or if you install third-party airports or scenery packs, it is always a good idea to delete your rolling cache as well as any of the NVIDIA shader cache files. The reason for that is anytime these files are updated, they can override each other, causing inconsistencies in the files, thus causing a corrupt file and giving you a stutter inside of the sim. In today's video, I will go over how to clear all of the NVIDIA shader cache that would include the DX, the GL, as well as the general shader files that will be located on your hard drive or your SSD. Stay tuned till the end of the video, and I will also go over some system maintenance items that can also greatly reduce the amount of stutters that you have inside of the simulator. So without any further ado, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, click on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All right, so the first thing we need to do in locating our NVIDIA shader cache is to go down to our file explorer, and we're gonna open that up. Next, over on the left-hand side of the menu, we're going to click on our local C drive. From here, we're gonna go over and click on users. We're going to double click your username and then we're going to go down to app data. From here, we're going to double click on local and then we're going to scroll all the way down until you find the NVIDIA folder. Double click there and this should be the location for the NVIDIA GL cache. We can click on the folder and then click the delete button. This should delete the entire folder and all the contents within. If for some reason you get a pop-up that says you are not able to delete certain files within that folder, that's okay. That just means that those files are in use at this particular time on your PC. So what you would want to do is just double click on the folder, highlight all the files inside, and then click delete, and then skip any of the files that it is not able to delete. Now that we have done that, we can move on to locating the NVIDIA DX shader cache file. To do that, we're going to go back up to the top and we're going to click on App Data. We're then going to go down and double click on Local Now. And then you want to double click on the NVIDIA folder. Double click on Per Driver Version. And here is where your DX cache is now located. Again, we're going to highlight the folder and then hit the delete key on your keyboard. All right, and here's the error I was just talking about when I was deleting the GL shader cache. If you get this error, hitting try again is not gonna do anything for you, so we're just gonna hit cancel. We're gonna open the DX shader cache folder, and then I'm going to select, shift and end will highlight everything, and now I'm gonna hit the delete button on my keyboard. Now you will again get this pop-up that will say, hey, we've got some files that are open right now and we cannot delete these. So I'm just gonna tick on the box to do this for all current items. Otherwise, you will continually get this pop-up for any files that are not able to be deleted. And then we're gonna hit the skip button. This will now delete all the files that are not currently in use on your PC. With that being said, you want to make sure that you do not have Microsoft Flight Simulator running when you are trying to delete any of these shader cache files, or they will not get deleted. Now that we have completed that, 
we have one more shader cache file that we need to delete on our hard drive or SSD. To get to this location, highlight your local C drive, right click, and then we're going to go down to properties. Once this menu has opened, click on the disk cleanup button at the bottom. This will now open your disk cleanup menu in which you can select your DirectX shader cache files. This might be another great time that you can clean out some other files that are located in your system, but for today, I'm not concerned with anything else other than my DirectX shader cache. Once you have this checked, we're going to go down and hit the OK button, and this will delete all the remaining DirectX shader cache files on your system. Now, for those of you who right click on your C drive, and do not have a properties option with a disk cleanup, let me show you how you are going to get to your disk cleanup option. You want to go down to your search bar in the lower left hand corner and just type in disk cleanup. At the very top, the disk cleanup application should appear, and then you can left click on that. This will open up your disk cleanup drive selection. Select your C drive and then click OK. This will open up the same disk cleanup menu in which you can select your DirectX shader cache files. Hit OK. And then we're going to hit Delete Files. And this will now clear all of our NVIDIA shader cache files that are on your system. If you have any questions about the NVIDIA shader cache, please let me know down below in the comments section. So now let's move on to the bonus system maintenance options that can also help reduce stutters in Microsoft Flight Simulator. To start off in this process, we need to open the command prompt. To do that, we're going to go down to our search bar again, and we're going to type in CMD. You also want to make sure that you open your command prompt in administrative mode. So you want to right click, and then we're going to run as administrator. All right, so now that you have your command prompt open, before we move any further, you want to verify that yours says exactly what mine does on the screen. C colon backslash windows backslash system 32. If yours does not say system 32, then you are not open in administrative mode. Close out of your command prompt and reopen. We are now going to be running two lines of code that are going to be running some maintenance on our system. Now, before we start entering this, I want to go over exactly what we're going to be doing. The two applications that we're going to be running through the command prompt is the SFC application or system file checker and the DISM application. So first, what is the SFC? This is integrated with Windows Resource Protection, which protects registry keys and folders, as well as critical system files. If any changes are detected to a protected system file, the modified file is restored from a cached copy located in the Windows folder itself. The problem arises here if you run your system file checker and the cached copies that are located in your Windows folder are corrupt. Now we have an issue, and that's when the DISM tool comes into play. This is used to update the files and correct the problem. It can be useful if your system file checker is not working, and it can also be used to fix Windows component store corruption or if a Windows image file becomes unserviceable. The DISM will repair the system file's source cache in your Windows folder. This is the source that your SFC application will pull from to repair the system files if they're needed. Now, if the system file source cache is corrupt and is not fixed using the DISM repair first, then the SFC program will end up pulling files from a corrupt source to fix problems. So in layman's terms, we need to run the DISM application first before we run our SFC. All right, so now let's go back to our command prompt and we're going to enter this command for the DISM application. 
Again, this will all be down below in the description in the copy and paste section, so you can just copy and paste this in. You do need internet connection for this to work, and this is going to take a little bit of time. Once you have this entered, just hit the enter button and it will run through the cleanup for your system image files. Let this finish, do not turn it off, and let it go through its entirety. Once it finishes, I'll bring you guys back and we'll go through the next step. While we're waiting on this to finish up, if you would like some more information on some other stutter tweaks, check out my Microsoft Flight Simulator Fixes playlist that's located down below in the description. All right, so now that our disk image cleanup has finished, we're now going to run the SFC scan now command, again, which is going to be located down in the description for you to copy and paste up above. Once you start this scan, you want to make sure that you allow this to finish without interruption just like the DISM that we did a minute ago. All right, so now that we have run both of these applications, your disk image and all of your system registry files should have now been restored if there was any corrupt files on your system. You can now close out of your command prompt, and now you can start up Microsoft Flight Simulator, and let me know down below in the comments how this did on your system. Thanks everybody for joining us today. If you have any questions, post them down below. And if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.